Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you're having a good week so far and that everybody's doing great. We're looking today at lesson 30.09, which deals with what we call thin lenses. We refer to them as thin lenses because the formulas that we end up using don't work if the lenses get too thick. Just in case you're wondering why we have the word thin there. This lesson can be found on page four of your current lesson handout. So just like we have two different types of mirrors, we have a concave mirror that we talk about, and we also have a convex mirror. We also have two types of lenses. One type of lens is a converging lens, and the other type of lens is a diverging lens. These lenses are named based on what they do to the light. So when you have parallel beams of light that refract through a lens, they will refract and change direction so that they meet at an actual point. That point is called the focus. And since the beams of light actually do converge there, it's referred to as a real focus. A diverging lens does the opposite. When parallel beams of light go through a lens that's diverging, they diverge away from each other. And in fact, they all diverge away from a common point that common point is called the focus or the focal point, but it is called a virtual focus because the light never really meets there. I'm going to do a comparison right now between converging lenses, and that's the name that we're supposed to use when we talk about these types of lenses, and concave mirrors. From now on, even though in your textbook, they will use the word concave when you talk about a mirror. I would prefer that you think of a concave mirror as a converging mirror. So a converging lens takes light and uses refraction to focus parallel beams of light. A converging mirror takes parallel beams of light and uses the principle of reflection to focus those beams of light to an actual point. And because both of these devices do really bring the light to a particular point, that point is called a real focus or a real focal point. I also want to compare with you diverging lenses and convex mirrors. And again, the proper name for this type of mirror at the bottom of your screen is called a convex mirror. But since it takes parallel beams of light and reflects them away from each other, it will serve you better to think of this mirror as being called a diverging mirror. When you take a look at a diverging lens, a diverging lens takes the parallel beams of light and causes them to move away from each other and away from a common point. The common point that all of these beams of light are moving away from is called a focus, and in the case of diverging devices, that focus is virtual because the light never goes to that point, it goes away from that point. Again, a lens will use refraction to change the direction of the parallel beams of light, but a mirror uses reflection. What I'm gonna do right now is insert a video which shows this process the parallel beams of light and how they are affected by a diverging lens, parallel beams of light and how they are affected by a diverging mirror, parallel beams of light and how a converging lens affects them, and parallel beams of light and how a converging mirror changes their directions. So we'll take a look at a video showing some demonstrations, and then we'll move on. All right, I'd just like to show you the behavior of light when it converges through a lens and the behavior of light when it diverges as it passes through a lens. Don't forget that lenses allow the light to go through them and the light undergoes refraction. On the other hand, mirrors reflect the light off of the surface using the principle, obviously, of reflection. Okay, what we're looking at here are parallel beams of light from a laser diode ray box. And I'm going to show you what happens when the light converges as it passes through a lens. This is not an actual lens. It's just got the cross-sectional shape of a lens where it's convex on both sides. That's the shape of a converging lens. 
you actually take a look at a lens, this is a fairly thin lens, so you're probably not going to see the bulging outwards on both sides, but the lens itself is a circular piece of glass. So again, this is just a model of the cross-section of it, but when I put this down and allow the light to refract through it, what happens is the light refracts to a common point, and this is called the focus of the lens. It happens to be a real focus or a real focal point because the light actually converges to that point. If I were to take a look at a cross-section that represents the shape of a diverging lens, a diverging lens is concave on both sides. This is what an actual diverging lens looks like. Again, you can't really see the cross-section, but there's a caving in on both sides of this lens. So when I put this down, what happens, you can see right away that these beams of light diverge away from each other. And if you were to trace them back in this direction to behind the lens, there would be some point back here. It might be about in this location where my fingertip is, where those beams of light appear to come from. And that point where they appear to come from is also a focus or a focal point but it's referred to as a virtual focus or a virtual focal point. So this is a diverging optical device. It has a virtual focal point. We can take a look at this one again. This is a converging optical device because it has a real focal point. Now, the type of mirror that has a real focal point is concave. So this is a model of a concave mirror, and it's not an actual mirror, it's just a cross-section of it, but if I put this down, you can see right away that the beams of light reflect, and they converge to a particular point. So this is the focus of this mirror, and it's a real focus, just like this is the real focus of this lens. So these two devices... This type of lens, which is called a converging lens, and this type of mirror, which we usually call a concave mirror, but which I like to call a converging mirror, these types of devices have real focal points, or real focuses. If we take a look at this type of lens, which we call a diverging lens, the focal point, which is back here someplace, is a virtual focal point because the lens diverges the light. There is a similar type of mirror that will diverge the light. It's called a convex mirror. But again, I would prefer to call it diverging. And when you take a look at the beams of light that reflect off of the surface, they diverge away from each other. It's a little harder to see where those beams of light are, but this is one of the reflected beams of light. This is one of the reflected beams of light. Another of the reflected beams of light is right here, and another one is over here. And those beams of light are all reflecting away from each other. They're radiating away from each other, and they appear to originate at some point back here. And this point back here is the focus of that convex mirror or diverging mirror but it's not a real focus it diverges the light so this type of mirror has a virtual focal point because it's diverging the light this type of lens has a virtual focal point because it's diverging the light which means that these two types of devices a diverging lens and a convex mirror, which is diverging. These both have virtual focal points. Whereas once again, these types of optical devices have real focal points, and they can be referred to as converging optical devices. I hope that helps you wrap your head around all of this converging, diverging, real focal point, virtual focal point terminology. All right, I hope that gives you an idea of what we're talking about when we refer to light converging or light diverging. 
What I want to do now is highlight for you the fact that these two devices, the device on the left, which is called a converging lens, and the device on the right, which I call a converging mirror, have similarities. In fact, everything that is true optically about the lens you see on the left is true optically about the mirror you see on the right. Physically, there's a huge difference. Lenses use refraction, mirrors use reflection. But both of these devices, since they're converging, have real focal lengths. So what that means mathematically is the focus is a positive number. When you put a number in for f in your formulas, you put a positive. As we saw with my demonstration of the large mirrors in my backyard, mirrors that have a positive focal length can produce real images or virtual images. I really tried hard to come up with a way to show that with a lens on a video, and it's almost impossible. I can't really get it to work out well. So you'll have to take my word for it that if you had a lens that is a converging lens, it's possible for you to look at objects through the lens and see real images, which means you will see them upside down, or you can arrange it so that you can see virtual images, which means the image will be right side up. One thing you will note is that the virtual images are always larger than the object for both of these devices. That's why these types of mirrors can be used for makeup mirrors. They enlarge the person's face when you're very close to it. That's why these types of lenses are called magnifying lenses, because under most circumstances, you're looking at virtual images through these lenses, and you want things to be bigger. We can do a similar treatment of diverging devices. The lens on the left is called a diverging lens. The mirror on the right is what I like to call a diverging mirror. They both have negative focal lengths. They only ever produce virtual images, and the virtual images are always smaller than the object. And again, if you were here and you had an actual diverging lens in your hand, you could put it at different places in the room and look at different objects through it and you would discover that no matter what you see, you will always see virtual images, they will always be erect images, and they will always be smaller than the object that you're looking at. When it comes to doing calculations with lenses, as long as you associate diverging lenses and diverging mirrors together, and as long as you associate converging lenses with converging mirrors, the rules are all the same. The rules for virtual and real images are the same, whether the image is produced by a lens or a mirror. The rules for the focal lengths are the same, whether you're talking about a mirror or a lens. By the way, before we go on, I want to show you one more quick video demonstration. I don't know if you remember, but when we first learned about mirrors, I stressed the idea that a real image is an image that can be projected onto a screen and that it would always be upside down. So in the little video demonstration I had shown you, there was a setup with a couple of meter sticks and I had a mirror and a candle flame and then a screen and the light reflected off of the mirror from the candle flame onto the screen and we got a real image which was upside down. I just wanna show you a very, very quick video here is the same kind of thing, except it's going to be a real image produced by a lens. All right, I just want to show you what a real image looks like and the circumstances that are required to produce a real image with a lens. So in the foreground closest to our field of view is a candle that's lit. A little bit further away is a lens, and then behind the lens is a piece of paper that's acting as a screen. The real image that's being formed, which is on the screen, and you may be able to see it faintly right now, the real image that's being formed is on the other side of the lens from the candle because lenses produce images by refracted light. So that light has to refract through the lens to produce a real image. If you look at where a real image is produced from a mirror, 
A real image produced on a mirror is result of the light reflecting off of the mirror, so it reflects back towards the same side of the mirror that the object is on. So real images are on the same side of the mirror as the object, but real images are on the opposite side of the lens than the object. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so that you can see the lens and the image being formed in a little more detail. If you look on the lens, you can see some other reflections and other images being formed there, but we're focusing on the candle flame. I'll go in a little bit closer so you can see the candle flame in more detail. It's a little bit washed out right now because I have a number of lights on in the room. The reason I'm keeping the lights on, at least while I'm talking, is in low light my camcorder has difficulty focusing. So I'm going to kill one of the light sources. And it looks like my camcorder is still doing a pretty good job of pulling focus on that image. You can definitely see the image of the candle. If I wave my hand over the candle flame slightly to cause it to move, you can see that the candle flame in the image moves. I'm going to kill the other light. I still have some ambient light in the room. There's a window that light is coming through and my computer is on, but you can see a fairly clear image of the candle flame. So that's what a real image looks like and the setup that you require to produce a real image if you're going to produce one using a lens. Okay, again, uh, I think it's important for you to note that when the real image is produced by the mirror, the image is on the same side of the mirror as the object because the light has to reflect off of the mirror to get to the screen. Whereas when you produce a real image with a lens, the image is on the opposite side of the optical device because a lens produces an image by having light go through it while it refracts, so the image is on the opposite side. All right, let's take a look at the two examples now. Number one, let's summarize the information. What are we told? We are told there is an object that is 2.5 centimeters tall. That's HO. The object is placed 10 centimeters away from a diverging lens. And you're given a lie right out of the gate. You're told the diverging lens has a focal length of five centimeters. Since it's a diverging device, the focal length is negative. And what we're asked to determine are all of the characteristics of the image. We would like to know the displacement of the image, the height of the image, and I'm going to throw in as well, I think we can calculate and we should calculate the magnification. We have our focal length formula, which says 1 over the focal length equals 1 over the object displacement plus 1 over the image displacement. I can put 1 over negative 5. I'm going to leave the units out. I don't think they're really that important here. Equals 1 over DO which is 10 plus 1 over di. So we want to take 1 over negative 5, then subtract 1 over 10, and then take the reciprocal of our answer to get di. 1 divided by negative 5 minus 1 divided by 10. Now don't forget, this is not di, this is the reciprocal of di, so I need to take the reciprocal of it in order to get my answer. I'm getting di is negative 3.33. Now that I know di, I can work on finding hi using the formula hi over HO equals negative DI over DO and putting the numbers that I know into that equation. Well, HI is unknown, but HO is 2.5 centimeters. Negative DI means negative of negative 3.33 over DO, which was 10. 
So now I have to cross multiply here in order to find out what HI is. I'm going to choose to carry all of my decimals. So I'm going to use negative 3.3333, etc. First thing I have to do is multiply that answer by a negative because it's negative DI in the equation. I need to multiply by 2.5 and divide by 10. So I am getting 0.83 repeating for the height of the image. Just a check here, di is negative and hi is positive. That makes sense. One of them is always positive. One of them is always negative. This is a diverging lens. Diverging optical devices only ever produce virtual images. Virtual images are always erect, which means the height is positive and that matches up with what we got. To determine the magnification, there's a number of different things you could do. I always just go with HI over HO. You could use negative DI over DO if you like. But we take HI, which is 0.83 repeating, and divide by HO, which is 2.5. Something tells me we're going to get a third here. But sometimes my numerical math in my head is flawed, so let's find out. Nope, we get a third. We get 0 0.333. Again, the magnification tells you something about the image height in relation to the object height. If the magnification is positive 0.333, the positive aspect of the magnification tells you it's a virtual image. It's oriented in the same way as the object. And the 0.333 tells you that the height of the image is only 33.3% the height of the object. So those are the answers to question one. Let's take a look at question two now. Again, let's just take the same approach. Let's summarize the information. The height of the object, we can see it's a four centimeter tall object. The displacement of the object is seven centimeters. It's been a while since we've done this and it occurs to me that I haven't reminded you of something for a while. HO and DO are always positive. The object always has positive attributes. It's the image that can have negative attributes. The focal length of the converging lens is three centimeters. A converging lens has a positive focal length. You'll notice I'm starting to be a little bit lazy here. I'm not putting units for this. We're in learning and teaching mode right now. Certainly if I gave you an assignment, you would be putting units wherever they're applicable. What do we want to find? Well, again, we want to find the image distance or displacement. We want to find the image height and we would like to determine the magnification. One over F, I'm not even gonna write the formulas down for this. One over F equals one over DO plus one over DI. Now we can find out what DI is. One divided by three minus one divided by seven. And again, that is one over DI, so we need to take the reciprocal of that and that gives me 5.25 centimeters for DI. Since we're getting a positive DI, I know that I'd better get a negative HI. The next formula is HI over HO equals negative DI over DO. We can cross multiply there to determine HI. Negative 5.25 multiplied by 4 divided by 7 gives us negative 3 for HI. The magnification can be found by taking HI over HO. Again, 
you could use negative di over do. And I'll tell you right now that if you carry all your decimals, you're going to get the same thing. The reason you're going to get the same thing is because hi over ho equals negative di over do. You have to get the same thing. So the magnification can be found by taking hi, which is negative 3, over ho, which was 4, you get negative 0 0.75. What we are getting is a real image. It's real because the magnification and the height are negative, which means the image is upside down. And the image itself is only 3 quarters the size of the object that's creating the image, or 75% the size of the object. And that's it. Fairly short lesson, really, because you're already familiar with working with these formulas. It shouldn't be that difficult. There are some questions attached to this lesson in your handout. The assignment is 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 10. Certainly, you could work on some of the other problems. I would consider the other problems to be challenge-type problems. But I know that some of you want challenge-type problems. If you have any questions at all, I'll show up for the next Google Meet and we'll help you out. In the meantime, I hope that lesson made sense and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and we will talk to you soon. Take care.